It's a pleasure to be here uh, once again. I think that's my third edition. Uh, so I did a similar talk 10 years ago, like uh, plenty of tips. So luckily, we have a, a different content uh, for this year. So uh, quickly introducing myself. I'm French. You probably noticed uh, the accent already. Uh, I own a, a company, like a one-guy company, and uh, as said during the introduction, I'm an official Burp Suite uh, training partner, mostly for Europe, but given I love Canada, so if I have customers in Canada, that will be uh, welcome. And uh, I train nearly 100 uh, people a year, so that's a lot of... Uh, uh, I mean, anyway, uh, you, you are here for the, the trips, uh, the tips. So, uh, what is the plan? First, I have a few tips for core tools, so tools which are here uh, by default. Then I will discuss a few extensions. Then I have a few other subjects, uh, depending on the time left. And uh, and after that, we have beers and the CTF and uh, enjoying Montreal by itself. So, uh, regarding proxy story, uh, my point is to be as lazy as possible. So, if I have to scroll through the results, that's probably uh, useless, and I want to avoid that. And uh, if we look at uh, Burp Suite, the default uh, sorting order in proxy story is the oldest on top. So you are constantly uh, scrolling and scrolling to the newest content. So the solution is super easy. You can simply uh, double click here, have the newest entries on top, and that's uh, quite uh, comfortable. It also works for logger. Uh, you can apply the same sorting and logger plus plus two. Um, in short, if you are scrolling to see the new results, you probably have to change the sorting criteria. Um, okay. Uh, second problem in proxy story, you want to map uh, a specific action, like clicking, clicking on a button in a mobile app or following a link to a specific set of resources. So uh, what I do, for example, in proxy story, I will tag the topmost entry. Then I will, uh, I will do something like, uh, I don't know, uh, accessing a website, uh, a complex one like Solar. And uh, here I can easily map. So everything which is higher than the gray line is related to my uh, latest action. And a variant of this strategy is that I will intercept the traffic, uh, access a specific host, switch back to proxy, and here I can color, uh, colorize directly from this menu. So it's uh, the same uh, outcome, but with a, a different workflow. And I switch back to proxy story, and I can see the first, the very first uh, request is gray, uh, green. Sorry. Okay, that's some beginner stuff. Uh, let's discuss repeater. <clears throat> so, in repeater, on the left we have the request, on the right we have the response, and quite often we are interested in a specific uh, location of the response. So, I have an example for that. Um, okay, uh, scroll too much. Okay, this is a web god, so that's a vulnerable uh, web app. Uh, we can see here. And this parameter is used in a command. And the command is outputted uh, somewhere in the result, uh, uh, in the response. So, the less efficient strategy would be to scroll and simply uh, go to the location. Uh, something a little bit better would be to search. You can see uh, at the, at the um, bottom, I can go directly to this entry. 
But every time I uh, send a new request, I have to scroll again. So behind the cog, you have uh, this uh, entry, and then the response will be scrolled uh, every time you have a new content. So if I submit my request, I go directly to the location I'm interested in. So I don't need to scroll and I don't need to spend any time uh, looking at the, I mean, looking for the interesting piece of data. Uh, what else? Uh, since a few years or months, we can uh, create colors, uh, I mean, create groups and uh, put uh, repeater tabs inside groups. So that's very uh, useful. Um, a related uh, feature, which is little known, uh, is the hotkey for search, uh, or search tabs, exactly. And I use Control shift s and uh, we get a list of all tabs, so we can uh, just uh, uh, navigate using the up and down key. And if I type some text, like Piper, I see directly the, and only the relevant entries. So when you have 50 or uh, 80 uh, entries, that's very, very useful. Of course, you need to put uh, correct names, but I mean, you probably have to do it anyway. Okay, let's discuss Intruder. In, in, in Burp Suite Pro, and not in the community version, there's uh, some interesting features. Uh, in Intruder, when you are using simple list, as I do here, uh, you have a menu, a uh, drop-down menu, with uh, plenty of word lists. And uh, so that's uh, useful by itself. And uh, it's possible to customize the word list. So from the menu bar, I go to uh, configure predefined payload list. And here I, have, I can use the built-in. This is a default value or point to a specific directory. That's what I do here. Here we go. And now I go to the same menu, and I have only my own word list. And if I want my own plus the built-in ones, I can go back to the same menu and uh, click on copy, which should be uh, export or dump. And that will extract the built-in word list directly to my hard drive. So it takes a few seconds. Here we go. And now I have the built-in word list on top, and at the very end, my, uh, uh, my own uh, word list. Um, yeah. yeah, what else? Uh, so this feature, the fact that we can uh, customize the word list, and there's a built-in list that's very nice. Let's say something uh, uh, negative. Uh, no. Uh, there's placeholders in word list. So let me show you them. Uh, if I use uh, fuzzing full, uh, you can see base here. And if we go uh, below, we can see your email here or your server name here, and uh, if you want to fully uh, use a word list, you need, of course, to replace these values with uh, real ones. And uh, there's a few uh, uh, payload processing options relevant to this feature. Uh, so you, on the screenshot, you see the first one will replace base with the base value stored in positions. Domain will use a unique uh, collaborator host name. And for all the other placeholders, you need uh, to customize manually. So here, I will replace file with etc password and your email with my own uh, email address. Uh, it's currently a mess, as you can see, and as listed on the previous slide, the um, syntax, uh, we, we have uh, curly brackets versus angle brackets, 
and we have file versus known file. So they, they have to uh, clean that, uh, but in all, in all cases, we have to uh, manually replace the values. And I think that plenty of bugs were missed just because uh, users were looking for dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot file between curly bracket and never finding the real uh, file, of course. Okay, uh, something about collaborator. So go collaborator is a way to get uh, notification, uh, notifications from the web app. And uh, a very common assumption is that if you want to get a collaborator ping back, you must use the collaborator domain name. And we will simplify, we will consider only the public collaborator server. So, uh, is this assumption uh, really true? Th that's the question. And you can imagine that if the answer would be yes, I would not have uh, this content in my slides. So, the answer is no, uh, or it depends. For DNS uh, pingbacks, you must use the uh, collaborator domain name. For HTTP interactions, you can uh, use any domain name as long as it points to the correct IP address. So, um, I could do it live, but uh, I mean, I did. I did it live five minutes ago. Um, I will uh, take a collaborator host name, so that's the public server, and that's my collaborator uh, ID or uh, host name, and it points to several IP addresses, but we will uh, use this one, 44.77, etc. And we will use another domain name uh, resolving to the same IP. So, uh, nip.io is a free service, and this is the IP address X encoded, and this is just a random string. I mean, not so random, of course. Um, so, we, are a domain name. we have a domain name pointing to the collaborator IP address. And my uh, host name is rsn, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it works surprisingly well. Here, I will simply access collaborator via my own domain name and put my collaborator uh, host name directly in the path. It could be in a parameter name, it could be in a parameter, in a parameter value, and as you can see, the interaction is correctly um, linked to my uh, own instance of Burp Suite. We can see here RSN, this is my collaborator uh, ID. And uh, we can do, uh, I mean, there's plenty of ways. Uh, that's another one, oops, my bad. I use uh, my collaborator ID as a user agent. And once again, the traffic is correctly correlated to my own uh, interactions. And I mean, if the web application firewall is looking for the domain name here, there's no way to find it. Okay, so we have a, a clean bypass in, in most situations. Okay, let's discuss uh, extensions. Hackvertor is a Swiss knife, like you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's um, XML or similar to XML uh, tags, and you can uh, change them, so you can apply uh, several transformations uh, on the fly. And uh, that's a basic example. Um, here we have a string, and we will uh, compress the string and the resulting uh, binary uh, data will be uh, base64 uh, encoded, and we get something like that. So that's a minimalist example. Uh, we can uh, generate fake data, and that's very useful when you have to generate uh, unique uh, values. 
if you are uh, creating users uh, or let's say uh, files via an API, you probably have to provide unique file names or unique usernames. And you can use uh, the fake, uh, fake hacker, fake book, fake company uh, tags in order to generate uh, like um, valid data, but a random one. Like uh, in this example, I'm just asking for sentences, and we get a few uh, sentences uh, generated uh, on the fly. We can go uh, to more complex solution. Here, I will um, anchor my email address and uh, put that in a variable called email. And uh, the flag here means the variable is global, so we can reuse it anywhere in Burp, in a different tab, in a different tool. And uh, somewhere else, possibly in uh, Intruder, I will uh, get my uh, variable and maybe iterate on UID, for example. And everything is in a JWT tag, and um, Hackvertor will generate uh, tokens on the fly. So as soon as you, are, you have been able to leak the secret key, you can generate uh, tokens on the fly simply using Intruder plus Hackvertor. Uh, if, if there's anybody doing uh, HTTP smuggling, uh, you probably know that uh, managing size uh, is a mess because we have usually two sizes and we need to manage them dynamically. So uh, it's a complex Hackvertor setup, but it does exactly that. Uh, we have some text here in the middle. And uh, on the line above, we will get the hexadecimal size of the chunk. And here in content length, we will have the size of the size, so the length of the size, plus two, using the arithmetic uh, tag. And I think I have a demonstration. Not sure if, if you can read anything. Can you read something? Yeah, OK. Uh, because uh, Hackvertor, we can't set the font size. So that's a problem. But uh, as you can see here, I have a short string. The size is 8 here. And the content length is 3. But if I add some uh, characters, OK, we can see that now the size is 26. So that's one extra character. And uh, the content length is now four instead of three. That looks like uh, nothing, but then you can uh, pay your attention to this section because maybe you are exploiting a complex bug and you don't want to spend any brain power uh, managing the size uh, manually. And we, we, we can go very far, so I will stop giving example. Uh, yeah, that's a um, specific application where you need to sign the body of the request with the CSRF token, and that could be done on the fly with Hackvertor. Okay, and there's much more. We can execute Python code, we can execute a system command like cat, whatever. Uh, we can access the execution uh, context, so we can have the URL, uh, the value of a specific parameter. I mean, that's, uh, v I mean, the, the more time you spend with Hackvertor, the more you like it. It's really good. Uh, there's a big uh, disadvantage. Uh, using tags will break uh, burp syntax parsing, and uh, that has uh, a few side effects, but uh, yeah. We don't really care. Like it's uh, not uh, something that will uh, forbid us to use the extension. Okay, Piper. I need to go quite fast. So uh, Piper, the ID is uh, interesting. You can execute anything running on your workstation or laptop directly in Burp. Uh, 
So it could be uh, an interpreter like Python. It could be any uh, command line or GUI application you have locally. So I have a few examples. Uh, let's switch to uh, burp. Um, OK. So uh, on the right, I have the response, which is a big blob of JSON data. And I want to make sense of the data. So uh, in Piper, I will enable the grown entry. And uh, the configuration is very basic. If the body starts with uh, a square or curly bracket, then I pass the response body to grown. And the result it appears directly in burp. And that's all, that's all we need. Here, I have a new uh, uh, tab here, labeled grown. And if I click there, I see the response body processed by Gron. And I have nothing else to do. Just define a filter and define which command should be um, executed. Uh, if you prefer, let's say, uh, JQ, we, can, we could have exactly the same config for JQ. Uh, that, that was Gron and uh, Ocular. So Ocular is a PDF reader, but we don't really mind, OK? Any uh, PDF reader will work. And uh, we have a, simili a similar configuration. If the response uh, starts with a PDF uh, tag, uh, a PDF magic, then we uh, enable a, a PDF reader in the contextual menu. So here, I can go to extension Piper. And uh, given we have the PDF magic, I can directly open the response in a file viewer. So if you are uh, processing a lot of uh, complex files, uh, it's very efficient compared to exporting to file, removing the headers, changing the extension, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, last demonstration for Piper. Uh, we will use, uh, we will compare some entries. So I'm not very uh, happy with the built-in comparer. And uh, I will uh, take uh, a few, uh, uh, so, sorry, three requests. So the three uh, yellow ones here. I right click, and here the menu uh, will appear only if we have two or three entries, because MELD can compare two or three files. And I will compare the requests. And I get directly the files, I mean, the traffic saved to, to disk. And uh, we can see the file names here, temporary file names. And uh, the meld command line is uh, generated on the fly, then executed. So that's very, very uh, convenient. OK, uh, Burbunti, it's uh, an extension uh, used to write your own sc uh, scanning check. But I think it will die soon, because uh, we have a core feature called bchecks that should be uh, deployed, I mean, uh, released in a few weeks. And uh, then you have a scripting language, and you can define your, your payload here, I mean, your attack. Then you define how to identify a vulnerability, and you have some meta information here. And I hope the community will uh, share this kind of, uh, of uh, recipes, uh, like, publicly. And you have a link to a video describing the feature uh, in the notes. Uh, what else? Uh, I need to go very fast. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. There's plenty of keyboard shortcuts. If you want to be very efficient, you need to use a, a, a combination of shortcuts. So uh, switching from proxy story to repeater, that's free action. Sending to repeater, we have Control R. 
switching to the repeater uh, tab that's Control Shift R and uh, emitting the repeater request that's uh, Control Space. So uh, if I do it, uh, I pick an entry and uh, I will use the shortcut. So Control R, Control Shift R, Control Space, and it takes like one or two seconds uh, to switch from proxy story to repeater. And uh, you will use uh, muscle memory, so you, you will not think about, uh, about the free hotkeys, it's just a complex hotkey bringing you directly to, uh, to repeater. Uh, poor man automation. That's when you are uh, looking for bugs, like in bug bounty, but you, you are in holidays or you are coming for, for North Tech and you want to look for vulnerabilities anyway. So we need two ingredients. We need a live task in Burp uh, and we need a very specific configuration. Uh, the live task will monitor proxy story and every item appearing in the proxy story will be scanned. So in most situations, that's very dangerous. And uh, we will combine that to, uh, with FUF. And FUF, uh, we will use a specific option. I will show the option, uh, which is dash replay dash proxy. And all the interesting entries will be relayed through a proxy. So we combine uh, FUF here, looking for uh, status code 200, and every finding will be uh, piped, I mean, will be uh, forwarded to Burp. And in Burp, we have this configuration. We have a live task uh, monitoring the proxy. Whatever the scope is, I mean, whatever the host name is, will, we will trigger an active scan. So, uh, for sure, that's not very advanced, like it's not a, a real pen test, but if you are uh, um, in holidays, it's better than nothing. And uh, you could even run FUF on a VPS and uh, forward to Burp through a SSH listener, so you have Burp locally, and you have FUF on a, a, a remote server, and they are talking uh, one to the other. That's quite elegant. Okay, uh, not sure how many time I have uh, left. Uh, something about performances. I have very, very often uh, some feedback about uh, Burp being uh, resource uh, intensive. Uh, my opinion is uh, very clear. Uh, computers are cheaper than brains. So you can send this slide to your boss or manager. Uh, you want a, a computer which is larger than necessary. And um, whatever you are doing, like a burp or running VM, etc., that should not be something slowing, slowing you down. I mean, it's already difficult to find vulnerabilities, so having a decent computer, I think it's a good idea. Um, how to stay up to date? Uh, so, of course, this is uh, just a few tricks. Uh, Port Trigger uh, has a channel on YouTube. They have very short videos and very long ones. Both are very good. Uh, they have a bunch of uh, Twitter accounts. Uh, plus all the accounts all of the employees themselves. Uh, I have um, an account, a Twitter account dedicated to Burp, so I have my real account, and this one is exclusively uh, related to Burp uh, tips or links or whatever. And uh, I'm nearly on time. So if you want to access the slides, they are already online. Uh, so you, jan you can just get them. Uh, and uh, what else? If you want some, I mean, if you, if you like what you, what you saw, uh, I will uh, release a workshop for free next month. So next month, uh, there's a free online conference called NaamCon, 
and I will have, uh, I'm not sure, 60 or 90 minute workshop uh, related to session management like cookies and uh, JSON tokens, whatever. And so that's a, a bit later. And uh, I think I, I'm nearly on time. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, they are welcome if we have the time. And I will be at the CTF uh, Friday evening and we, with no, no goal to score or anything. So if you have any, question, uh, any questions relating to, to the challenges and how could we automize, automate them, that would be uh, like a fun uh, subject. Thanks for listening. Thank you.